Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, we're going to talk about the sleep cycle and the different pathologies associated with it. We learned this topic by solving questions for a deeper understanding. If you're interested in medical videos, quizzes, study tips, and need guidance to pursue residency, do subscribe to my channel. Turn the bell notifications on so that you don't miss any update. Question number one. Sleepwalking usually occurs in which phase of sleep? Option A, REM. Option B, NREM. Our sleep cycle is controlled by the suprachiasmatic nucleus. This structure is present in the hypothalamus. The suprachiasmatic nucleus triggers the release of norepinephrine. This stimulates the pineal gland to release melatonin. Melatonin regulates the sleep cycle. A normal sleep cycle is divided into REM and NREM. REM stands for rapid eye movement. These eye movements are controlled by the paramedian pontine reticular formation. This is the stage where we get dreams. It's almost like your eyes are moving as they're watching the dream. In this stage, your limbs will lose tone, which means while you're dreaming, there is a very little chance for you to move. In the NREM stage, the opposite occurs. You will not have a dream, but your body is free to move. So, this is the stage in which sleepwalking is more likely to occur. Question number two. If you're in deep sleep, which stage of sleep are you likely in? Option A, NREM. Option B, REM. The answer to this question is NREM. NREM sleep has three stages, N1, N2, and N3. N1 is light sleep. It is relatively easy to wake a person up in this stage. N2 is deeper sleep. This is the longest stage of our sleep cycle. Bruxism takes place in this stage. N3 is the deepest stage of sleep. Sleepwalking and bedwetting take place in this stage. This is also known as slow wave sleep. Question number 3. What happens to REM latency in people with depression? Option A increases, option B decreases. The answer to this question is decreases. REM latency refers to the amount of time taken to get to the first REM stage after falling asleep. People with depression get into REM sleep very quickly. This means the time taken to get there is very little. However, the amount of REM sleep increases in people with depression. REM sleep is associated with thinking and dreaming. When I'm sad, I tend to overthink. So, this makes me remember that REM sleep is greater in people with depression. N3 is also decreased in people with depression. The elderly would also experience low REM latency. However, their total REM sleep is also low. Do you know any other disorder which could have low REM latency? Question number 4. Daytime sleepiness, hallucinations while falling asleep, loss of motor tone when there is an emotional stimulus. What else are you likely to see in this patient? Option A, low orexin levels. Option B, high hypocretin levels. Option C, alpha synocline deposition. The answer to this question is low orexin levels. This patient is likely to have narcolepsy. Orexin is also known as hypocretin. It is produced by the hypothalamus to regulate our sleep cycle. In narcolepsy, there is very little orexin production, which leads to this sleep disorder. Hallucinations while falling asleep are known as hypnagogic hallucinations. In contrast, hypnopompic hallucinations are those which patients experience when they wake up. The GO in hypnogogic reminds me of going to sleep. Patients with narcolepsy also experience cataplexy, which is a loss of body tone when there is an emotional stimulus. These patients begin their sleep with the REM stage. So, REM latency in patients with narcolepsy is also decreased. Since the motor tone in the REM stage is very less, it also helps me remember that these patients experience sleep paralysis. Good sleep hygiene, sodium oxybate, and stimulants like amphetamines are some of the treatments for narcolepsy. Antidepressants may also be used to suppress REM sleep. 
Alpha synuclein is a protein which is deposited in the brains of people with Parkinson's disease and Lewy body dementia. It is associated with REM sleep behavior disorder. In this condition, patients act out their dreams while sleeping. Usually, in the REM sleep, our body is sort of paralyzed. But in such patients, this paralysis is lost. So, their limbs are free to move and hence, they end up acting their dreams with stuff like kicking or moving furniture, etc. When woken up, they do remember their dreams. This condition is associated with Lewy body dementia. Take a look at this video if you want to learn how to diagnose different types of dementia. Note that you don't require alpha synuclein in order to diagnose a patient with REM sleep behavior disorder. Question number 5. A child wakes up screaming in the middle of the night. She does not recall any dream but looks extremely scared. What is the most likely diagnosis? Option A. Sleep terror. Option B. Nightmare. The answer to this question is sleep terror. Sleep terrors occur in the third stage of NREM sleep. There is a sudden emotional arousal which causes the patient to feel very scared. Nightmares, on the other hand, will occur in the REM stage and patients will be able to recall their dreams. REM stage can be remembered. Question number 6. A patient comes in complaining of difficulty falling asleep. She used to work from 5 p.m. to 12 a.m. Now, her new job requires her to report to the office at 6 a.m. She finds it very hard to fall asleep on time. She mentions how she doesn't get sleep until 2 a.m. regardless of how hard she tries. What is the most likely diagnosis? Option A. Delayed sleep-wake phase disorder. Option B. Shift work disorder. Option C. Advanced sleep-wake phase disorder. The answer to this question is delayed sleep-wake phase disorder. Patients with delayed sleep-wake phase disorder don't get sleepy until like super late in the night. They tend to fall asleep somewhere around 1 a.m. to 6 a.m. So, naturally, they tend to wake up later in the morning or even in the afternoon. They are well rested and won't complain of being tired because they are getting the required amount of sleep. But, this becomes an issue when they have to wake up early in the morning. Seems like this is going to be most of us right after the lockdown. These people come under the category of night owls. Advanced sleep-wake phase disorders are morning birds. They cannot stay awake beyond 7 p.m. They usually go to sleep somewhere around 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Since they are going to sleep at this time, they tend to wake up extremely early in the morning and sometimes even in the middle of the night. Shift work disorder occurs in people who are working the night shift. These are people who feel extremely tired after work, but for some reason they cannot sleep in the morning. This usually happens because while driving home from work, the sunlight prevents them from falling asleep. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you want to see more videos like this and share it with people who you think would be interested in learning about sleep. If you want to learn about GI pathologies, click this link right here. And if you're interested in learning about head trauma, take a look at this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.